Hello everyone, it is July 18th, 2023. It's Tuesday. It's Harp Tuesday. Welcome to this week's episode. So today I'm just going to be talking about sort of the standard uh, fingering, the standard fingers we'll use for any particular interval. And it's a, it's a useful thing to know. Before I talk about it, I'll just do a little bit of vocabulary. So uh, an interval in music means the distance between two strings. On the harp, it's actually really easy to measure that because we can just count the number of strings, including the beginning and uh, finishing string. So for example, if we're playing two strings right next to each other, we count them one, two, it's an interval of a second. One, two, three, this is a third. So we're starting from the beginning string and including it and the ending string, or we can count down as well, one, two, three. This is a fourth, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, a fifth, a sixth, a seventh, and eight has a special name. It's an octave, which of course also means eight, but the octave also kind of draws attention to the fact that it is a special interval because it's the same note, a C here and a C here, just an octave higher, which means that the higher note is vibrating at twice the frequency of the lower note. And so to our ear, they sound similar, but different. So a different octave, different octave but somehow the same sound or at least that's how we've gotten used to thinking of, of them. And then of course a ninth and a tenth, eleventh, twelfth, whatever. And so that's how we that's how we describe them, that's the vocabulary. And there's as I say there's a there's a sort of a standard finger to use for any particular interval. Uh, for example here in the first heart book on page 18 in the study and intervals we see that. And then I believe she got it from Renier, uh, and so Renier's Method for Harp, um, the first book in, in my edition at least, it's on page 13. There's a nice layout of the intervals. And let's talk through them, right? So basically, of course, if it's the two notes right next to each other, a second, we'll do one and two. And this is regardless of whether we're playing them as a chord or whether that we're playing them one after another. A third will also be one and two. A fourth will be one and two. Oh, we switch to one and three on a fifth. Continue with one and three on a sixth. A seventh is a bit of an in-between thing. So in the first heart book, uh, she says one and four. Renier, I think, more accurately says one and three or one and four, a bit of an in-between. And then an octave is one and four and anything greater than that is one and four. And you might say, well, well, but why? Maybe if you have very small hands, maybe it feels much easier to do a fourth with one and three. Or if you have very large hands, maybe it feels easier to do an octave with one and three, or a fifth with one and two. And it's not as if someone's going to come in and, 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 and say, beep, 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 no, 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 uh, minus 10 points, you're using the wrong finger, the wrong spacing. But there is a reason behind these sort of standard spacings, and they have to do with sort of training our fingers to find shapes that they will find quite often. And what I would say is it kind of comes back to four note chords. So when we're playing a four note chord, we're locked into which fingers we're using because we don't use the pinky. So we only have the four, well, three fingers and thumb available to us. So we have no option other option but to find you know one two three four and so if we look at a standard four note chord shape the, the sort of the three the root first inversion and second version we see in a root position chord shape that it is a fourth between one and two right here's this fourth we do have to find that with one and two and we're finding a sixth with one and three and an octave of course with one and four. First inversion still an octave still a sixth Oh, and a third, but we were probably going to play this third with one and two anyway, right? And then second inversion, we see one and two, a third between one and two, a fifth this time between one and three, and still an octave between one and four. So that again gives us kind of this delineation of, okay, it's a third, a third is one and two, a fourth is one and two, we don't switch yet to three, 
and then we switch to one and three on the fifth. Do we always have to follow that? No, I'll talk a little about that um, in a moment, but that is sort of the standard, that that's what we, we would switch here, and maybe we'd switch on the seventh. Uh, in a vacuum, I would say I would tend to switch to one and four on the seventh, but it also depends on the context, and then certainly on an octave, it's one and four. And, and again, it just trains our hands to know and to find these very common shapes. And again, if you ever want to play a four note chord, you're going to have to find uh, some of these spacings. Before we talk about when you might not do that and what to do, like if you have small hands or big hands, let's talk just a little bit about something I think that's kind of interesting, which is what if we're playing three notes? And what do we do there? Because I think there's kind of an additional rule that's or I don't know if it's a rule, but an additional guideline that's kind of interesting. So let's say we find an octave and we are thinking about the, playing another note in between. So now we have, unlike a four note chord, we have some options. We could use three or two. If we want to play this, of course we would use three, right? That makes sense. Here, it's a sixth, so with, I would say one and three. And yes, that feels great. On the flip side, if we're trying to play this, which is quite an awkward shape, but we're certainly not going to try to play this with three. And this with two. And here's that fourth, right? It's a fourth between the top note and this G. We're not going to try to play that with three. We're going to keep that with two. Then the interesting thing arrives, arises here with what about if we play this? So this note is a fourth above and a fifth down. So it's a fifth down. We should play one and three, right? And you could, but there's this kind of additional rule which, or guideline which would say that you want to avoid having a fourth or greater between three and four if you can avoid it. So this, no problem, or even this. But suddenly as you've got that bigger spacing, if you think about it, it's a lot easier to create space between one and a finger than it is between two fingers, right? It's, it'll, it'll be, that's always where the sort of the awkward stretch happens. So here, even though if we weren't playing this lower note, it's a fifth, we would play that with one and three. Because we're playing this lower note, we would actually do one and two. Now, if the lower note was this, and we only had a third between these bottom two notes, then that's no problem. We can use a third finger here, have it be a fifth with one and three, great. But this, we will switch to four, two, one. And again, I think there's a, an example, and I did an episode on Renier's um, on Bord de Rousseau, uh, where we do this. And now we're going to play the same two notes here, the sixth, which you'd think would be one and three, but the lower note is a B. And because we don't want to have that fourth between the third and fourth finger, the spacing the interval of a fourth, we actually switch to two, even though it's a sixth here. Now, of course, that might be, maybe it happens to be more comfortable in your hand to do three there, but that's just an interesting kind of ah, additional rule. So let's talk about when you might vary. And the first is, of course, would be depending on your hand size. So if you have very small hands and, it's, and maybe a widely spaced harp, you might find that playing a fourth is more comfortable with one and three. Or for example, this type of chord, where it's a sixth between one and the bottom note, and so you would normally play it with three, but you're finding that this spacing between two and three is a bit uncomfortable, and so maybe this feels more comfortable. Now again, going back to the four note chords, when we play a first inversion shape with an extra gap between two and three, we have to do this shape with, with two and three. So that's where the argument is to just play this even if you're not adding the lower note beneath. But if it's if it's quite awkward and, and certainly if it's painful, then just put the fourth finger on the bottom. And same as same as this, of course we'd like to kind of train the finger to be able to find that fourth with one and two, but if it's more comfortable with one and three, sure. 
And I think uh, you want to pay attention to your hands and also think about uh, what your what maybe your sort of end game goal is. So if you're looking to become a virtuosic harpist, and there are some amazing harpists with very small hands, and you want to be able to play all these four note chords, then you might try to do the standard fingerings, even if it's a bit awkward. Um, on the other hand, if you're, if you're, I don't know, maybe if, if you have arthritic hands or, or some damage to your hands and you and it, maybe you're just happy to do whatever you can to get a good sound and how it feel comfortable, right? And again, I think paying attention to how the hands feel that if it's a bit of a stretch, that's okay. But if it's causing pain, right? If it's causing pain, you don't want to do any sort of long-term damage. So maybe that means trying to figure out, okay, what can I do? Say, if I want to play this shape with three, two, one, which again, you don't have to. What can I do to, to, to relax and maybe make that easier? But also, if, it, if I can't find a way, let's just do four, two, one. And then when we look at, say, large hands, because large hands and maybe a, a tightly spaced harp, you might find that, you know, you're, you're playing fifths, maybe even sixths with one and two, and octaves with one and three. And on the one hand, that can be great, because it's maybe you got a little bit more control with one and three, as opposed to one and four. But it is nice to really groove the octave because whenever we have a four note chord, we want to find an octave with one and four. Same as some of these, fifths and sixths. Yeah, it can be handy to have three automatically reach for that one where maybe playing often notes in between. So yeah, just to give you kind of an idea that there is sort of a reason behind these, but you certainly don't have to follow it, right? You certainly don't have to follow it. And then finally, to think about the context of the piece and what sounds good. I think, in fact, in a video I did many years ago of the virtual duet of the Bach Gounod Ave Maria, I'm pretty sure last time I, I just briefly saw it flash by or something and saw, I think maybe I did 4 2 1, 4 2 1 on that shape. These days I would definitely do 3 2 1, but if it sounded better, that's a spot where you're trying to be nice and legato and, 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 and this, this very smooth sound. And if it sounded better, great. Um, so if it's, yeah, if it sounds better, great. Then there's also the idea that the context of what's happening. So let's say, let's say you're doing this. If that fifth is, is somewhat comfortable, there's a real plus to not having to switch fingers. So instead of, if we can just go, that might feel better on your hand, even if it's a bit of a stretch. Or, or for example, talking about the seventh, which I definitely feel is a bit of an in-between sizing. Uh, it could go B3 and one or four and one. If you were doing this, and then had to do this. I would do three to one on both of those. And in general, actually on that, on the spacing for me, I will do three to one, just a little bit better control than four, three, one. On the other hand, if you were doing this, maybe, maybe you'd stick with four, three, one on that, on that seventh because it, again, it doesn't involve switching the fingers. So there are many instances where the context of the piece will de determine what interval you might use. But in general, I think for, for most hand sizes and, and harps, the sort of standard fingerings are a really good, standard interval sh uh, spacings are a really good starting spot. And yeah, just kind of train the fingers to find these, these shapes that they will often find in other chords and other spacings as well. So hope you enjoyed that. Hope you found that useful. I will see you in two weeks for another episode of Harp Tuesday. <laughs> Cheers.